instead of expanding, sometimes we'd like to actually factor the terms. Um, so it's sort of like the reverse process uh, of the multiplication procedure that we did before, but also it's a, a simplification process and it'll be used in many other situations. But let's start with what's called the greatest common factor uh, procedure. So what you do here is when you have your expanded terms like this, each term you try to find um, uh, the uh, you you try to find common factors amongst each of the terms, and then you try to find the greatest common factor amongst all those terms. So let me let me sort of sort of show you how this works. So first you look at the constant terms, the coefficients and you try to find the greatest common factor uh, for the coefficients. And if you, if you look at this, well, you have 24 and 8, and uh, tw 24 has a factor of 8 in it. So you could actually write this first term as 8 uh, um, times um, 3, right, y to the fourth minus 8y squared. So at this point, you see that we have this common factor of 8. And um, what else is common amongst these terms? Well, we have some y's. And what is the, how many y's do we have in the first term? Well, we have four of them. In the second one, we have two of them. So what is the most that you can take out of here? Well, I'm sort of grouping together what I might take out. So I'm going to write this as 8y squared, 3y squared. All right, so this, this original 24y to the fourth, I'm sort of slowly decomposing it to the point where I have common factors amongst the terms, and I have sort of produced the one that is the greatest common factor. So look at it now. It's, it's pretty clear that I could actually factor out this 8y squared. And so the factoring procedure is sort of the reverse of the distributive property. So now that they both have this common factor, the factoring procedure is, OK, I'm going to take this out, the 8y squared, and then what is left over? So you put what's left over in parentheses. So once I take this factor out, what's left over is this 3y squared. And if I take 8y squared, from negative 8y squared, then what's left over? Well, just a just a negative 1, right? And you, the nice thing about this is you could always check, do this process in reverse. If you were to simplify or expand this expression, you would use the distributive property, right? You would multiply the 8y squared by the 3y squared, and you would get this, which would simplify eventually to the 24y to the fourth, and then 8y squared multiplied by negative 1 would give you negative 8y squared. So it's totally re reversible, and you can kind of see how this is the reverse process of doing the distributive property. So this is what factoring is. If you were ever concerned that there was more to be factored out, well, you could just look at what's left over and, and ask yourself, are there any common factors left over here? Um, and you know you sort of just check okay so let's move on so we'll consider that our answer and let's try to uh, do the greatest common factor amongst these two terms so uh, what do we have here well we have 30a cubed uh, b to the fourth. And then I have a to the fourth b cubed and a 20. So uh, looking at the constants here, what's the greatest common factor? Well, it looks like um, uh, 10, right? Uh, we could factor um, 10 out of the first one. How many of these a's can we factor out? Well, you can you you could factor three of them out of the first term, but four out of the second term. So the most that I can factor out would be three of them. So a cubed, and how many b's can I factor out? Out of the first one, I can factor out four, but the second one I can only factor out three. So I have to take the least of those, which is b 
cubed. Okay, so if I factor this out of the first term, what do I have left over? So if I factor out a 10, I still have 3 left over, so that'll give me 30. Uh, we took out all the a's, and there's 1b left over. Right, so just I'm rewriting this first term here. Second term, if I factor this, I want to factor the same exact thing out. 10a cubed b to the third. What would we have left over? Well, if I'm supposed to get 20, then I would have 2. And a to the fourth, um, since I have a cubed, I need another a to make a to the fourth. And then b cubed, um, I'm factoring out b cubed, so I'm not going to have any b's left over. So that looks like that's about it. And right here, um, you can check yourself, is there any more that uh, we could factor out of what's left over that's in common. Well, I have 3b and 2a. I'm not going to be able to factor out any more from those. Um, right? So now what we could do is we can, we can make that our factor that we're bringing out of those two terms. So now we have 10a cubed, b uh, cubed. And then when we take this term out of these two, what, what are we left with? We have a 3b. And then we have plus 2a, right? And then if you use the distributive property, you will see that we get exactly this line up here, which would be what we had uh, to begin with. So again, this procedure is to slowly determine what is the greatest common factor. So just do that systematically. First, look at the coefficients. What's the greatest uh, common factor amongst the coefficients? then do each of the variables involved. In this example, we have three terms. Uh, and let's start with the uh, constant. So I have a 6, 18, and 24. 6 uh, goes into 18, right? There's three of them. Uh, this is uh, 6 times 3. And this is 6 times 4. So 6 will be the greatest common coefficient factor that I can factor out of these three. Uh, how, and what kind of variables do we have? Well, we have x's and we have y's. So how many x's can we take out? Out of the first one, there's 4, then there's 3 in the second one, and then 2 in the third one. So the most that we could take out of all three is the squared, the x squared. right? And what about the y's? Well, we could take out 2 from the first one, 3 from the second, and 4 from the third. So the, the most we can factor out would be you know, the, the least one, so the y squared. OK, so it looks like this is going to be our greatest common factor. So if I take this out of the first term, what do we have? Well, we took out 6x squared. So 6 is gone, but uh, we have x squared left over. And we took all the y's out. So that looks like that will be our first term, right? The only thing that's left is this x squared. Uh, what about the second one? If we take out the same exact factor that we're hoping is the greatest common factor, and it looks like it is so far, um, uh, what do we have left over? So factoring out 6 out of the 18, there's 3 left over. Uh, we're factoring x squared out of x cubed, so there is 1x left over. And y squared, uh, we're factoring out of y cubed, so there is 1y left over. And then again, if we're going to factor 6x squared y squared out of the third term, what do we have left over? So we'll have a 4. And then x squared is gone. And then we're left with the y squared. And then now, before we proceed, just look at what are the leftover uh, factors. Is there anything in common? Well, we only have x's here. We do have an x here, but there's no x's left over. So can't do anything with that term. Um, and the 3, we're not going to be able to take that out because of the first term. F same thing with the 4. And there's no y's to take out of this. So this definitely looks like we didn't make a mistake. So the last step is 6x squared y squared times what are the leftover factors? Well, you already wrote them out. You have x squared plus 3xy plus 4y squared. And that looks to be the correct answer. So let's just box that. 
Another factoring method is called factor by grouping. And if you have, um, it doesn't, it doesn't always work in every possible situation, but in a lot of, uh, a lot of times, um, you can do sort of this uh, greatest common factoring a couple of times, and that'll lead to a, uh, a factor by grouping. So let me let me show you how this works. So n look at these first two terms together, and look at the last two terms together. So the first two terms, if you do this greatest common factoring for just those first two terms, what could we factor out? Well, we could factor out the 5, and we can also factor out a y squared. So you see, I can factor out 5y squared from both of these terms. What would you have left over? If I factor out 5y squared, I'm left with an x. And if I factor out 5y squared from 5y squared, well, I took everything out, so I just have the 1 left over. And if I find the greatest common factor amongst these two, what is that? Well, I can factor out 3a from these two. And what's left over? I have an x and a plus 1. OK? And then now, here's what's interesting. You notice that these two um, remaining factors actually have a common factor. You see that this x plus 1 is a common factor amongst these two. So what we can actually do at this point is we can factor out x plus 1. And what would we have left over? So if I factor out x plus 1 from this whole term, you're left with the 5y squared. You know what? Let me switch back to red. You have the 5y squared plus, and if I factor out x plus 1 from this whole term, the 3a times x plus 1, then you're left with the 3a. And if you are not convinced, just use the distributive property. The distributive property would be to take this whole first factor and multiply the 5y squared. You would get this. Then the x plus 1 times the 3a, you would get this. So this is legitimate, and that is uh, an example of factor by grouping. So in this next example, what could we do? So again, let's see how much we can factor out of the first two separately from the last two. So from the first two, we can factor out, it uh, looks like an x, right? There's no a in this second one. So we can factor out uh, an x, and we would be left with a, right? So multiplying, we'd get, you know, if I factor out this x, I'm just left with the a. If I factor out an x here, I'm left with a minus x. All right, what about over here? Over here, we can factor out a, um, uh, now, here's one thing to keep in mind. We want to end up with an a minus x, right? So let's just let's just say um, you didn't realize that, okay? So what would you try to factor out of these two? Well, in, it, it looks like they have in common this b. So let's factor out a b. Well, what would you have left? You have a minus bx, so you'd be left with a minus x, and you'd be left with what? just the positive a, right? OK. And if you rewrite this, they actually will have a common factor, right? This is the same. This term right here is the same as a minus x. So now we do have this common factor of a minus x right here amongst these two separate terms. So we can factor that out, actually. So if I factor out a minus x, what are you left with? Well, um, for the first term, this first term is x times a minus x. So if I factor that out, I'm just left with the x. And if I factor it out of the second term, we're left with the b. So this is our factorization. All right, so continuing. So factor by grouping, we'll look at the first two and the last two terms uh, and just do kind of greatest common factoring amongst both of them. So what can we factor out of these two? Well, we have only x's, and here we have a 5 and an x squared. So 
we can't do anything with the 5, but we can factor out an x squared. That's the greatest common factor for these two. So you'd be left with an x and a 5. What about over here? Well, we could factor out uh, a 4, and there are no x's in this term. So we could factor out a 4, and we'd be left with x plus a 5. And that looks good because we have this common factor of x plus 5. So that means we can factor that out. So x plus 5, factoring that out, you're left with x squared, and then plus the leftover plus 4. And what about our last example here? So this would be factoring our common factor here. What would that be? We can't factor out a 3 or a 2 because that's not in common between them, but we can factor out uh, a number of x's. There's 3 here and 2 here, so we can factor out 2. You'd be left with 3x. Here we can factor out uh, all the x's, so we're left with a 2. And what about in this this one over here. Uh, we have 27, so that's 3 cubed plus 18. So this is uh, 3 squared times 2. So we, it looks like we factor out 9, right? A 9. And we are left with 3x. And we would be left with a 2. And that's good because we have a common factor now. So that means we can factor that out, the 3x plus 2. And what are we left with? We're left with the x squared. And we are left with the 9. And again, you can always look at this and do the distributive property, and you will, you will just be going backwards. So again, this factoring process is sort of the reverse of the distributive property that we've been using.